You know, I really like the Gears of War franchise. One of the things that made me want to own an Xbox 360 besides Halo was definitely the Gears series. I was 16 at the time, and seeing the previews and ads for this was really something to behold at the time. At least, on a personal level. That probably had to do with the fact that the graphics looked amazing to me back then, and I won't lie, it reminded me a lot of not Halo so much, but rather Warhammer 40k. The company that we have to thank for this title is Epic Games. Yeah, before Fortnite became a sensation, Epic was goring it up with Gears, and before that it was Unreal Tournament, and before that it was Jazz Jackrabbit. Production of the game started as far back as the year 2000, no joke, and back then it was originally intended to be like a third-person version of Unreal Tournament. In fact, they were going to call it Unreal Warfare. That was all until Cliff Blazinski, aka this guy, came into development and insisted that a few things be changed. For example, the game was originally going to be a full-on multiplayer experience, but later the devs decided to add a single-player campaign. Another thing that was changed was how the game played. Taking some inspiration from games such as Resident Evil 4 and Kill Switch, Gears of War would start to become less of an arena-style shooter and more like an arcade-style shooter. The first glimpse that gamers would actually get came at the 2005 Game Developers Conference as an unnamed exclusive for the 360. The demo that was shown was hailed for its suspense and, most importantly, its visual lucidity. In short, Gears of War was aiming to be the 360's hot app, much in the same way Halo was for the original Xbox. And by god, that's exactly what happened when this game was released. Much like how Halo was a system seller, this title became one as well. It helped push sales for the console, and if you own a 360, then there's a pretty high chance that you've at least played Gears of War or one of its sequels at one time. this in and see what makes it tick. The narrative of Gears of War goes like this. It is some time in the far future, and even though man has been able to colonize much of deep space, conflict is still a huge part of everyday life. A liquid, called emulsion, which by the way can be used as a power source, has been discovered on a planet called Sarah. Humans start colonizing the planet, new nations start popping up, and an economic boom centered on emulsion starts. However, this has led to a lot of fighting on Sarah, and many wars start erupting. 79 years later, and the wars, which have been dubbed the Pendulum Wars, have ended due in no small part to a political party called the Coalition of Ordered Governments, or COG for short. But just as quickly as peace has been declared, a new danger literally emerges from beneath the civilization of humans. A group of subterranean monsters, calling themselves the Locust Horde, start to wage a genocidal war against the people of Sarah. Fourteen years have passed since the Horde's emergence, and the Coalition is on the losing side of the fight. Enter the main characters for this game, Marcus Phoenix, Dom Santiago, Augustus Cole, and Damon Baird a rugged team of fearless COG soldiers who've been given the task of going within Locust territory and releasing a weapon that will turn the tides of war. The story, in my opinion, is quite interesting, but I think the characters are what really drive the plot. For instance, you got Marcus Phoenix, a reinstated Coalition soldier whom prior to the events of this game abandoned his post to save his father and got court-martialed for it. He's a dedicated fighter who only wants peace, but he's also aware of the rampant corruption present within Cog's government. Phoenix's longtime buddy Dom is also pretty cool. I would describe him as not only a very loyal friend to his squad members, but also a downright badass. Dom's single-player AI tends to give you better covering fire than either Cole's or Baird's. Uh, speaking of those two, Augustus Cole, or Coltrane as he's sometimes called, is probably my favorite character in the game. Possibly my favorite character in the entire franchise. I just love this dude. What with his action movie one-liners and his go get em attitude, the Coltrane just can't be beat. Finally, we have old Damon Baird. 
the sarcastic jokester of the group. In terms of character development, Baird definitely drew the short end, at least for this game he did. But even though he wasn't given much character development, I still end up liking him quite a bit. He's a roughneck smartass who, despite being often pessimistic, is actually the most intelligent person in the squad. I've always been a fan of arcadey third-person shooters like The Punisher and Red Dead Revolver. If done right, that kind of gameplay is awesome. I like the way Gears of War is played. To me, it's hella fun, and it makes you think strategically. This is not one of those TPS games where you're a near-invincible one-man army like in PsyOps. No, no. In this title, you need to get behind cover or you end up dead. The enemies have to do the same thing. The only difference is that their health doesn't regenerate. Yours does, so it's much better to find something to get behind and lay down suppressing fire, rather than taking the Rambo approach to battles. You're not in it alone either. Dom, Cole, and Baird's AIs are quite smart, and they'll totally help you out through the duration of the game. Sure, they're not completely invulnerable, in fact, when they're downed, you're the one that has to pick them back up, but 8 out of 10 times, they're pretty damn helpful, and without them, Gears of War would just be that much harder. And speaking of challenge, this game will kick your ass. Now I mean that in the best possible way. You're gonna die a lot in gear, so you first timers out there better get prepared for that. But because you have unlimited continues, there's really no excuse for you not to keep going. As I mentioned previously, you have to play the game kinda strategically. Playing with reckless abandonment will only end up in a quick death, and then it's back to the last checkpoint. You gotta use cover to your advantage, but thankfully, there's plenty of that to go around. Even though I'm getting my ass kicked, the deaths don't entirely seem unfair. Getting killed feels kinda warranted seeing as that I wasn't using my head, but that just makes me want to play even more. Think of it this way, the more you die, the better you become. Practice makes perfect, after all. As with any shooter, armaments are your main method of attack. Most of the weapons in this game are hella fun to use. In all, there are ten, five used by the Coalition and five used by the Locust. Though one of the guns does suck, and that dishonor goes to the MX-8 snub pistol. When you use this gun, the game just laughs at you. It's the weakest weapon in the entire game, and if you can avoid using it, do so. Now, a much better COG weapon to use is the Lancer. As iconic as Marcus Phoenix himself, the Lancer Assault Rifle is the go-to weapon for pretty much any situation. Plus, it's got a fucking chainsaw bayonet on the end of it. Even though I end up getting killed a bunch using the chainsaw, it's still pretty satisfying just to see it in use. The rest of the Coalition's weapons include the Nasher Shotgun, which is pretty handy inside buildings and such, the long shot sniper rifle, which is a lot more situational than it may seem, and then finally the BFG of Gears of War, the Hammer of Dawn. The Hammer of Dawn works like this. You aim it at a nearby enemy, and then a big ass laser beam rains down on said enemy from the sky. Now I'll be honest with you folks, as much as I love using this gun, there is a catch to it. Like the long shot, the Hammer of Dawn is very situational. Oh sure, it's freaking awesome when you get to use it, but you don't get to use it that often. Be aware of that, first-timers. Oh, of course, Shasta. The Locusts have bought along their own armaments for the fight, and fortunately, you get to use them as well. The Hammer Burst is probably the most common gun found amongst the ranks of the Locusts, so it'll also be the one that you use the most from them. It's a pretty good weapon, its shots are more powerful than that of the Lancers, and like the Lancer, it can be used in pretty much any situation. 
The Locusts definitely carry a better handgun than the Coalition, though. Unlike the Snub Pistol, the Boltok can actually do some fucking damage to enemies. Hell, I've been able to drop a few bad guys within three shots a couple times. It's a damn good gun. Next up, we have the Boom Shot the rocket launcher for Gears of War, and like any rocket launcher, it's great to use against slews of enemies, but you should make sure you're a good distance away from them. It should be known, though, that unlike the Hammer Burst and Bulltalk, which can be dropped by most Locusts, the Boom Shot is only carried by one particular enemy. Also, ammo is not plentiful for this thing, because again, only dropped by one enemy. Another gun that's similar to the Boom Shot is the Torque Bow, and much like the Boom Shot, the gun itself and the ammo for it is scarce because, you guessed it, only one type of Locust uses it. Granted, it's still a fun weapon to use. When you shoot it at an enemy, it embeds inside them, then explodes. Usually it kills the Locust in one hit, so that's pretty awesome. But I can't emphasize this enough, don't get too attached to either the Boom Shot or the Torque Bow. Ammo just isn't going to be abundant for those. Finally, we have the very last weapon, the Bolo Grenade. You're going to want to save these babies up, because the locusts delight in spawning pretty much underneath your feet. So you're going to have to use one of these to cave in their sinkholes. So far, I've heaped a lot of praise onto this game, but there are a couple bad things that I'd like to go over. You folks probably noticed that I haven't really been collecting the COG tags, and there's a reason behind that. You do get an achievement for getting all the tags, but other than that, you don't get anything else. I think I would have been given more of an incentive to find them all had I have been rewarded with more stuff, i.e. infinite ammo for a particular gun or what have you. Other than bragging rights, I really don't see any reason to collect the tags. Another little thing that kind of bugs me with the game, and I'll be honest, this is a nitpick on my end, but I hate how it's sometimes a little too easy to get stuck up against a wall or something. Now, this is more than likely more of a me issue than it is the game's issue, but I find it to be pretty obnoxious, especially if I'm in the middle of a fight. are yet another highlight of this game. Now, it's been well over a decade since Gears first hit shells, and yes, it's kinda showing its age, but by 7th gen standards, it looks nice. The visuals kinda remind me of Dark Age comic books such as Spawn and The Punisher. It's just hella gritty. One of the graphical effects that I really enjoy from this game is the blood splatter on the screen. I'm not sure if Gears was the first game to do this, but they sure as hell made it look gruesome as fuck. Now, I should mention that the color palette the devs used for this game is quite muted. Now, me personally, I don't consider that a bad thing because, after all, it was meant to be an edgy game, but for some of y'all out there, these colors may not be to your liking. I've covered pretty much everything there is to cover about the first Gears of War title. I know I'm leaving out a couple things, such as the two-player mode and the ranked online matches, all in due time, folks. But truth be told, Gears 1 is not that long of a game. I mean, it's not super short, either. But if you know what you're doing, you can finish this in well under six hours. And that's just playing by yourself. Regardless, I still had plenty of fun, and I think you folks would too. I don't know what it is, but Gears of War has a particular charm to it. The story, the characters, the gameplay. I love this title. Not to mention, it was the killer app for the 360. Out of all the 7th gen consoles made, the 360 is my favorite. And I won't lie, Gears has a lot to do with that. It's a very straightforward game, and it gets to the point pretty quick, but it's still pretty entertaining nonetheless. So I'm going to give Gears of War an E for excellent. If you have a 360 and you haven't played this yet, 
You owe it to yourself to give it a try. Alrighty, Shasta, do you have any final thoughts? this game, I think I'm in the mood for something a little less linear. I hope to catch y'all in the next review, and as always, you come back now, alright? <laughs>